Episode 10, The Journey Home. Once upon a time, in the land of the Theria, there was a Princess Nea and a Princess Lulu, and they went on the most amazing adventures. They had just gotten back from an underwater adventure, taking two magic crystals that fell from the sky back to a special temple under the sea, which in turn began to heal Etheria's water of dirt and grime. Now the city of Sparlin had thrown a giant party to celebrate the clean water, and it wasn't even a full day until some terrible news came Prince Paul's way. Prince Paul, Prince Paul, said a tired young boy. We've been searching for you. Where have you been? And Prince Paul told the boy, I've been on an adventure with Princess Nay and Princess Lulu. We've been helping to heal Etheria. And as they talked to the boy, he told them that at Cedar Landing, the water there was turning dirty and drying up as well, just like it had at Sparland. And how recent is this report? Prince Paul asked the boy. As of yesterday, your royal highness. And Princess Nea, Princess Lulu, Ola, and Prince Paul did not understand. They had just used the blue and the purple crystal to heal the water and make it clean. At least that's what they thought. And the inventor, who was standing nearby, now that they are back in Sparland, spoke up. This boy is right. Prince Paul of Cedar Landing and Ola of Ubin, as keepers of the Aquarian Crystals, you have done a great job starting the healing process. And it has begun here in Sparland, but there is more work ahead and much more to prepare for. You now need to use the crystals to make sure that all the water everywhere is clean. Head to Cedar Landing. Ryla will meet you there and she can explain. I must stay here and work on building out those plans, Princess Nea and Princess Lulu. And he gave the two princesses a special wink. So Prince Paul and Ola began their journey to Cedar Landing to investigate and figure out what was going on. And he even asked Princess Nea and Princess Lulu if they would come too. And they agreed. As they headed back, the journey was very long and they had to go over many obstacles. They picked up supplies on their way and crossed the great field where the ogres tried to attack Scorch and through countless woods. Now normally on this journey there was a bridge over a large canyon that you could walk over, but as they approached the bridge it was broken in two and disconnected, leaving the party stuck on one side of the canyon. So they sat down and thought, how are we going to cross this bridge? And high above them, they saw Ryla circling back and forth. And Princess Nea thought, maybe she can help. But Ryla never stopped flying and never came down. She just circled a couple times and then disappeared over the horizon towards Cedar Landing. And just as they were about to give up, they heard someone on the other side of the chasm. Prince William, upon hearing his brother, Prince Paul had returned from sea, was actually coming to get him. And the group called out, Prince William, Prince William, we need your help. And Prince William, seeing the broken bridge and his brother on the other side, I know, I know, we got word that this bridge was broken and... And then Prince William stopped suddenly, noticing that his brother was in the presence of an ogre. Paul, noticing that his brother was uncomfortable because of Ola, spoke up, Brother, may I introduce you to Olav Ubin? She is a fellow traveler of mine, a friend to Cedar Landing and Sparland. And now even the underwater kingdom of Alamia. Of Ubin? Prince William repeated, clarifying that she was not of the same ogre horde that attacked Sparland. Ola of Ubin, she said, kneeling before Prince William. Well, a friend of my brother's is a friend of mine, and I trust that you, Ola of Ubin, are of sounder mind and judgment with us humans than others of your kind. And he spoke in such a way that made Ola feel less important than him, just for being an ogre, which is something she'd felt her entire life. There was a way humans, elves, and other races treated ogres that felt wrong. As much as it hurt her feelings, Ola had begun to find ways of moving beyond it and see the truth instead. Well, we are here to fix the bridge, said William. We brought a bunch of builders that are going to make it quick and speedy. And the crew started rebuilding the bridge, and they threw this huge rope across the canyon and both Paul and Ola caught it, and together they held it while the team started building the bridge around the rope. And before they knew it, there was enough of a bridge for someone to walk across it. Once across, Prince Paul asked his brother, 
William, is it true? Is all the water dirty? And William replied, yes. Yes, it's true. And a bunch of common animals are getting sick and their owners angry. So they traveled back to Cedar Landing and Prince William brought his builders. Show me the dirty water, Paul commanded when they arrived. Me and my companion can do something about it. When they walked into the kingdom with the female ogre, the townspeople got frightened. And in fact, some people wanted to lock Ola in jail. Princess Lulu and Princess Nea noticed what was happening and decided to speak up this time. People of Cedar Landing, if anyone should wish to lock an ogre up for what they have done, it is I, Princess Nea, and Princess Lulu. As the ogres of Gosdor had sieged our beloved city and had overtaken our castle. But this, this is not one of those ogres. She is pure of heart and she is helping us heal Etheria's water. Trust me when I say that she is noble and she is good and she is a friend to us. And with that, Princess Lulu smiled and agreed. It is true, kind people of Cedar Landing. Let us welcome Olaf Ubin as one of us. And at that moment, Prince Paul and Ola walked towards the river that ran through the middle of the city, where buckets of dirty water sat on the edge of the river. All of the people stood back and watched, as Prince Paul and Ola together pulled out their crystals, and they dipped them into the water, and the river water immediately started fanning clean water throughout the stream, and dirt and grime, all in the river and all in the buckets, started to magically disappear. And when they turned around, everyone was standing around them in awe. Are the keepers real? Someone whispered. And the protectors? Another? Then Prince Paul and Ola asked the crowd, Does anybody have dirty water? Is anybody missing water? And people started bringing their jars and their gallons and their bottles of dirty water, only to find that some were already clean when they got there. But for the ones that weren't, Prince Paul and Ola used their powers to clean everybody's water. And it was just by the sheer fact that the water came near the crystals that cleaned them. And Paul and Ola realized that healing Ethereum's water could take a long time and turn out to be a big, big job after all. That night, after they got done cleaning all of the water in Cedar Landing, Ola, Prince Paul, Prince William, Princess Nea and Princess Lulu were all in the tallest tower of the castle, looking out over the city when they saw Ryla flying around, and slowly the hawk swooped into the tower through a window and stood on the table. Princesses, princes, and Ola, the friendly wise ogre. It is time to share more about these crystals with you. I am sure you have many questions, Ryla said and they all sat around as she explained more about the crystals. Everywhere in Etheria, they are experiencing dirty water. Even though you have begun healing the Aquarian Temple, there are more. Four more temples you must find and begin to heal, until all five have been restored. Cities, towns, and villages all around Etheria will experience dirty water. And Prince Paul looked at Ola, and Ola looked at Prince Paul, and the two of them looked very nervous. They had no idea they had such a big adventure ahead of them and such a huge role to play. This was, in fact, a very big responsibility. Can you two do it? The hawk asked. You might be the only people that can. Prince William, seeing a chance to help save the world, jumped in. I will help. I'll go with. And this made Olaf feel awkward. The last thing she wanted was to travel with someone who thought lesser of ogres. I might not be able to use the crystals like you guys, but my brother should not go on this adventure alone. And everyone kind of looked at him funny. Alone? I, I mean, he and Ola should not go on this adventure alone, he smiled. And they agreed, albeit with reluctance from Ola, that they would accept this challenge and travel around Etheria and restore the other four temples in order to clean the water in the land. But Princess Nea and Princess Lulu looked at Ryla and the team. Well, what about us? We want to help. Shouldn't we go with? And Ryla answered, Princess Nea and Princess Lulu 
You two are needed to find the other keepers pure of heart. There are still seven crystals that need to be found, and each one of those crystals is needed to restore the five temples. And we must find them before anyone impure finds them and decides to use their power for themselves. To that, Princess Nea and Princess Lulun nodded. That night in Cedar Landing, the city slept in peace because they now had clean water. And at the very next day, Prince Paul, Prince William, and Ola headed out on their own adventure to go unlock the other four temples and bring clean water to the rest of the world. While Princess Nea and Princess Lulu set out on their adventure to find the other seven crystals and the keepers of pure heart and mind. But what they didn't know was that there were others looking for the crystals, others who knew more about the crystals and what they were and how to harness their powers for selfish reasons. The end.